Open up your Bible to two places that are familiar to many of you who are in our church family, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and then Malachi chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and Malachi chapter 3. Malachi, of course, is the last book in the Old Testament, the last book in the Old Testament. So the easiest way to find that is turn to Matthew and then turn back a few pages, but it's right there nonetheless. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and uh, verse 6 we're going to look at. And again, super seed son. I mean, it's just not a natural seed that we're sowing today. Not just a natural, it means we're not sowing apple seeds, y'all. Uh, amen. We're sowing a financial seed that we believe is a supernatural seed that will produce a supernatural harvest and, in fact, uh, change what's going on in the natural. Amen. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, um, the Apostle Paul here, he says this, and, of course, the Lord's saying this, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. How many would like to be in the bountiful department? I want to stay there. Amen. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves what? He loves a cheerful girl. That means a person who's happy about it, whose heart is in their giving. Amen. And God is able to make all grace, that's the favor of God, the favor of God, abound towards you, all grace. Now, now you could just preach on the grace of God right there for a while, and you'd, you'd be real happy about it. You'd get real excited about what, what it says. When it says, all grace abound towards you, that means the help of God, the favor of God, the help of the Holy Spirit that you need in every aspect of your life. That's all the grace of God. Amen. Well, some, don't let her shout by herself. Somebody ought to shout with her. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah <laughs> well my lord hallelujah that's all right that's a good thing right there <laughs> hallelujah 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So what's going on right now? We got some people that actually believe the word right now. Believe what God said, that all grace is abounding. Hallelujah. All grace is abounding toward us. Favor of God is abounding toward us. Hallelujah. Every favor and earthly blessing is abounding unto us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Woo! Praise God! <laughs> Woo! I tell you what, man, I just believe my best days are not behind me. My best days are ahead of me. God's best blessing and grace is ahead of me. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Brother Hagen, he always said, get thrilled with the word. Get thrilled with the word. And I've been waiting for that for years. You know what, I'm, I've been waiting for that for years, just to read the word and then just get thrilled with it. No. No explanation, no really in-depth. I didn't preach for an hour and sweat my face off and have to throw my coat at somebody. And man, just get thrilled at what God is saying. Get thrilled at his word. Get thrilled to be able to sow and get thrilled with his grace and favor in our life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All grace. Oh, grace. I tell you, there's a difference when you, when you read the Word and it's more than a storybook, more than a history book. You believe that God, what, just, what God just said is exactly what, what He'll do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Call it what you may. I'm just simple enough to believe it. Come on, anybody else in here just simple enough to say, I believe that. I'm going to have that for myself. Amen. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. I've always loved uh, how many all-encompassing words there are just in that little, little sentence right there. Do you know what I mean by that? All grace, all sufficiency, all things, abundance for every good work. I mean, he's just, he's just making sure there is no, no ground that is uncovered concerning anything or anything that he will do. Amen. Amen. He says, as, as it is written, he's dispersed abroad, he's given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies, God supplies, y'all see that? He who supplies, what does he supply? He supplies seed to the sower. Amen. Seed to the sower. Say, well, I don't have any seed to sow. I know you got something. Come on, you got something. I, I don't mean you have a million dollars right now, but you got something, don't you? You got something. He said, well, he'll supply seed to the sower. That means if you sow, then he'll make sure you got some more seed to sow. That's what he says. Supply seed to the sower and bread for food. That means you have more than enough, just as he said a, few, uh, a little bit ago. Supply, and then what does he say? He'll supply and multiply. It sounds like good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over stuff right there. It's supply. Not only is he going to supply the seed for you to sow, but he'll, he'll multiply. What's he going to multiply? The seed that you have sown, what you have already sown, right? So today I'm sowing seed today, but I'm also believing that there's a harvest that's come in on the seed that I've already sown. And I have seen some of that harvest come in. And because I've seen some of that harvest come in already, guess what I'm doing? I'm sowing some more seed, right? So as I'm sowing some more seed, what am I believing for? Well, that there's a harvest coming in on the seed that I have sown. And then I'm making preparation for my future harvest because I'm sowing more seed. Are y'all with me on that? Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, he'll, he'll supply seed to sow. And, and I like this next part in here. We usually don't, you know, you, people don't usually talk about it too much. But he says, he'll increase the fruits of your righteousness. Increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now, righteousness is really a couple things. One, right standing before God. But sometimes when it says righteousness, he's talking about the, your right living. Your right living. Your living, the way you're living right before God. Right? So he says, he'll increase the fruitfulness of how you're living before God, that'll produce more fruit in your life. Think about that. That means that if you're serving the Lord, you're doing things that are right before God, and it may seem like they're not being fruitful. He said he'll increase that fruitfulness. That means there'll be more production from what you're doing. That means even if it's as simple as you spend a little time in prayer in the morning, you spend a little time in the Word in the morning, whatever time you're spending right there, he said, that I'll make that more fruitful. You'll get more out of that than you've ever gotten before. You'll get more revelation than you've ever gotten before, right? And then for whatever area you serve in or you help in or in your marriage that you want to honor God in or raising up your children, that's right before God, right? He says, I'll make that fruitful in your life. How many of y'all can stand to be more fruitful? And, yeah, I can stand that. Amen. He said, I'll make that more fruitful in your life. Praise God. Amen. Then what else does he say? While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. He says, I'm thankful for your generosity. I'm thankful for your generosity. Now, I'm thankful for the blessing that is on your life and that is coming upon your life. You know, we just got through singing about uh, blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Now, now, I don't know if you realize that, that, but that comes from Abraham, what the Lord told Abraham in the book of Genesis, I believe, chapter 12. First few verses right there. He says, I'm going to make your name great, and I'm going to bless you. He says, and you are going to be a blessing. I'm going to make your name, Genesis uh, chapter 12, 1 through 3 there. I'm going to make your name great. He says, and I'm, I'm going to bless you. He says, but you are blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. So I want you to consider this for a moment, that, that uh, our blessing isn't solely for us. Isn't exclusively just for us. That the blessing of the Lord not only is for us, it's a sign to those who see us, which is a blessing as well, but also it's not supposed to just stop with us, right? That there's, there's a blessing that's supposed to flow through us. 
supposed to flow through us. You aren't to be a cesspool. You are to be a river. You aren't to be a cesspool. I mean, a cesspool has nasty stuff growing on in it, right? I mean, junk, all kind of junk, you know. But, uh, but a river is, I mean, refreshing. It's clean. It's clear. Have you ever been to Colorado where the water's just coming straight down the mountain? Man, I've been there before my grandparents lived there. And been there, boy, it's just the cleanest, most beautiful, pure thing you just about you ever did see. Now, if you live in Louisiana, we, we see the other side a lot more, don't we? Uh, the Mississippi River looks a certain way once it gets right to the bottom of the United States of America. It's beautifully brown. Hallelujah. <laughs> looks like coffee. Hallelujah. It's, it's amazing. Praise God. <laughs> but that's because it's already picked up all kind of stuff all the way along, all the way down. Well, uh, God wants you to be, amen, he wants you to be something that he can flow through. Amen. That's what I was talking about earlier, being available. Being available. That means he, God wants you to be something that, that he can pour through that he can pour through. Praise God. So turn to Malachi chapter 3. Y'all got that already probably, but in case you don't, just turn there. God hasn't called you to the ministry of hoarding. Y'all seen that TV show about hoarding? My wife, she likes to watch that and just, after she watches it, she's like, oh boy, we are throwing some stuff out of the house today. We are cleaning the corners and chunking stuff. I'm like, I come home and there's all kind of stuff. She's like, you need to take that to the garbage. I'm like, babe. She's like, we are not going to be hoarders. I can tell you that right now. I'm much more on that side. I like to keep things and kind of remember what they came from and all that. She's like, let's clean it out. Let's clean it out. You aren't called to the ministry of hoarding. That means, and my dad always said it this way, get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. No, we're called to be a blessing. I said we're called to be a blessing. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. It says, uh, will a man rob God? Everybody say yes. Yes. He's asking a question that he already knows the answer to. Anybody ever ask your kids a question that you already know the answer to? You just want them to answer right because you already know. He says, will a man rob God? He says, yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? He gives two areas here. In tithes and offerings. In tithes and offerings. Two areas. Well, the tithe, anybody know what the tithe means? Most of y'all should know, right? Come on, somebody tell that. It means a tenth. That's literally what that word means. It means a tenth. Well, he tells us to bring all the tithe into the storehouse in just a minute, but I just want you to get the point. He says the tithe, really, it belongs to the Lord. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. First fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow. Your barns will overflow. I mean, you just have more than enough is what he's saying. You have overflow uh, with new wine there. So he says in tithes and offerings. Well, offering, that's over and above the tithe. How many of y'all would agree with that? Now, a tithe, if it belongs to the Lord, you know you can't, you can't give an offering to the Lord if you, if you aren't tithing. Are you with me? I mean, you can't give an offering to the Lord. An offering to the Lord begins after you've given that 10%. So that'd be at 10.1 or 11% or 12% or 30, 15%, 20%. I mean, it's somewhere in there, right? That's, that's where you're giving over and above. You're giving an offering to the Lord. Now, today, that's really what this is about. But for me and my wife, we commit uh, to tithe, but to give an offering over and above every single time. Every single time. So me and my wife, you know, we're filling out this card and we, we check their tithe. But then we give over and above our tithe another 20%. Another 20%. So we give 30% of our gross uh, goes right back into the church. Right back into the church. And that, that's not including other ministries or things that we give to or guest ministers that come through or even a Sunday like this. So this morning we're giving uh, over and above the 30% that we normally give. So, again, um, I don't even know if y'all can keep up with us. Anybody in here? Y'all can't, can you? Are you too scared? You're too scared. Well, I'm I'm a little bit scared right now. (laughs) Say, what what about, you know, the government? And what about, oh, I got to pay my bills? Well, we just don't make bills that mess with that 30%. That's all. So then, what does that mean? That means every time, you know, we get a paycheck or we go out and minister somewhere, whatever it is, We give right away 10% and then another 20%, right? So that'd be for $1,000, $300. $300. 
300 of the gross. That means, and you can interpret that however you want to interpret it. My interpretation is before the U.S. federal government gets any or before the state of Louisiana gets any, God gets his. God said, what if they keep, what if they take more and more out of my check? They going to keep taking more and more out of the check. I don't know. I mean, uh, all I can tell you is I'm going to give 30%. Unless they take 75% of my paycheck, I'm giving 30%. Amen. Hey, man. So what, what are you going to do? Well, so that means every, every time I'm giving, I'm sowing 20%. I'm sowing seed every Sunday. Well, what's the benefit here? What's the benefit of being a tither? He says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food. What's food? Well, that's a supply or provision in, in where? In my house. In my house. I looked up the, the root word of that Hebrew word there. means to build or to repair. To build or repair the house. He says that there, there may be provision or there may be a continual provision or repairs or building in the house of God. That there's never a lack in God's house what he's saying right there amen he says and try me try me you know what that means test God put him to the test it's funny to me how many times people want to put God to the test in so many areas but they don't want to test him in this area this is the one area God told you to test him in I mean it means to investigate investigate if you study out what it what the really deep, uh, dig deep into it he's talking about even like uh, uh, to to uh, to test like you would test a metal to find out what it's made of. Find out what its strengths are, right? So when he says, test me, he's saying, find out what I'm made of. Find out what my strengths are. See if I want, what does he say he's going to do? Come on, somebody got your Bible there? Try me now. They said, Lord, if I will not, he's like, I dare you. I dare you. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing there's not room enough to receive it that's a blessing to the tither right there boy if, if bare minimum you should be a tither it belongs to the lord first of all but there's a, an extreme blessing that comes just from tithing just from tithing he says i open for you the windows of heaven you know what it, what you know what it means to open it means to open wide or to break forth I just, I just wanted to really dig deep into it, but break forth or to, uh, to, to let go. That means there are certain things that God has in store for you that if you're not tithing, he can't let go of. He says, when you begin that to tithe, he says, I'll let go of that for you. Open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing. That word blessing is, is uh, the Hebrew word baraka. Did I say that right? Baraka. Baraka. I thought it was interesting. I was studying it because uh, Farrell and Lynette named their business Baraka. Is it home health care? Is that what it's called? Baraka Healthcare. Baraka Health. They named their business after that word. But it sounds like a good name, doesn't it? You know what that word means? Baraka means prosperity and blessing. He says, I'm going to pour out for you. Now, I'm just reading the Bible, y'all. That's what God said. He says, I'm going to pour out for you prosperity and blessing as you tithe. Amen. So I've got $10. Who, like, who would like to have $10 this morning? I saw Robert's hand. No, you're on staff. You can't give you $10, man. <laughs> All right, my man, come on. Yeah. Tell me your name one more time. Markel. Come here, Markel. Move quickly, my friend. We've only got so much time. Come stand up here on the stage with me. You want to preach, share, testify? <laughs> You just want $10. Okay. Come up here. Stand with me. I got 10. Let me make sure it's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to get Robert up here to preach maybe. How about that? All right. So you want $10, right? Let's pretend I'm the Lord. Now everybody knows I'm not the Lord. Um, but me and him are real close. $10, all right? I'm going to provide for you $10. There you go. All right? You can do whatever you want to with it. All right? Whatever you want to with the only thing I ask though is that you give me a tithe off of it. Okay, give me a tithe off of that Are you gonna do it? No, 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 no. You, you know what tithe uh, you got ten dollars. How much is that? How much is ten percent of ten dollars? Come on somebody help this man out One dollar. All right, you can keep the other 
Now, this, is, this belongs to me. I, I supplied this for you, but I'm asking you to honor me with this. You honor me. It's, this means me and you are in covenant. We're all, and to some degree, we're in business together, and we're in partnership together, so to speak. All right? Yeah, we're in covenant together. All right, so that's one. Now, if you want to give an offering to me, that word offering means, I mean, think about that word, offering. It means to offer up, to raise up as unto the Lord, right? You know, I was talking about this to my kids, my kids yesterday, and I had to tell them, I said, y'all, y'all need to think about what you're going to give on Super Seed Sunday. And so Macy, she gets all crazy. You know, she's eight years old. It's like, I'm going to give an offering to the Lord. And she got some money. She stood on top of the couch, and she tried to give it to God. It's like, here you go, God, here you go. And so I thought about that's funny how people think that way. And like, well, I tried to give God my money. Well, he says, bring it to the storehouse. That means you bring it to the place where you're getting fed, your local church there. Now, I'd tell anybody at any church, I'd preach this at any church. If you're going, I'd preach it at Calvary. I'd preach it at Horseshoe. I'd preach it at the POA. I'd preach it at Zion. I'd preach it at Y'all need to tithe to your church. Your, it belongs to your church where you're getting fed. All right. So, so we bring that together. So then if you want to give an offering to the Lord, you okay? All right. Make sure you're all right. If you want to give an offering to the Lord, then we're going to have to give something over and above that, right? So you all know in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 through 10 there, how it says to purpose in your heart, purpose in your heart. You don't have to purpose in your heart for this, y'all. I mean, you need to commit to this. You don't have to purpose in your heart for this. You know why? It's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. You wouldn't steal from your neighbor, would you? You wouldn't, dear God, you wouldn't steal from the church now, would you? Years ago, we had somebody that, tried, that was stealing money out of the offering bucket. Man, Jesus is Lord. Woo, it's amazing they're not in hell right now. They're not that I know of. I think they're still alive. Um, but I mean, think about how serious y'all are thinking about that. You would never take something out of the offering bucket, right? But you'll keep what, what? The tithe from God, still in your pocket, still in your purse, still in your checkbook, and it belongs to God. Now, I may not know it. Somebody else may not know it, but God knows it. All right, so this belongs to the Lord, all right? So if you want to give an offering, you know, you can choose. Now, I really am giving you that $10, all right? So you can choose to give whatever offering you want to give off of that, but it needs to be. So how much are you going to give, my man? You're going to give $5. That's all right. Count it out. I know you can do it. I believe you can. That's $5. So then he's giving, he's giving generous, y'all. That's really generous. All right. It's really generous. All right. You can buy a pack of gum with the rest of that. All right. So this belongs to the Lord. This, however, is a choice that I am making to offer up to God and offering to him a seed that I am sowing. Praise God. Praise God. And David said it this way when someone was trying to provide an offering or a sacrifice unto him. He said, I will not give unto the Lord that which costs me nothing. He said, no, you're not giving for me. I'm going to give of my own. Praise God. Now, I'm going to give you all this and you can, you can uh, do whatever you want to with it. But I encourage you to do what you said you were going to do. <laughs> Amen. Now, I wanted you to hear a few testimonies of people that have put this to the test. Anybody in here put this to the test? Yes. Amen. So I like Desmond and Portia, Kirk and Cindy and Andy and Patty. Would you all come up here? And I cer certainly these aren't the only people that could testify about this today. Many of you could. And um, it's going to be a miracle for them to not preach for an hour, each, and, each one of them, and tell of how faithful God has been. But I want you to just hear. Um, this is more than just me preaching, y'all. You know, this is more than just me saying, y'all give, you know, this is a real deal. It works. It works. It's not an overnight, you know, uh, get rich quick scheme. This is not the lotto, y'all. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about you being a millionaire because you put $10 in an offering today. And, no, but I am talking about the favor of God, the grace of God. It's a real thing. It's a supernatural thing. So uh, I'll let y'all go first and um, y'all can amen them, shout for them just like you would, you would for, for me, right? Yes. Amen. My uh, favorite attribute of God is that he is faithful. And you can put him to the, truck, to the test, like you say, like the word says. And know that whatever he has promised, 
He will do. And I love that about God. I love that uh, we have been faithful in our tithing for ever. <laughs> Since we've uh, come to the Lord, I was born in a, a pastor's home, and so that was automatically taught to me. But um, what I love is that he stands by his word. He's faithful to his word. And I was telling Pastor Aaron about a, a testimony just recently from this past year. I work in outside sales. And uh, there are 16 people in our office that covers the entire state of Louisiana. And uh, around the middle of the summer last year, uh, they had come up with this great idea that they would stack rank all of uh, the salespeople. And what that means is whoever is at the top, uh, you know, everything is great. Whoever is at the bottom of that uh, sales stacking um, could be written up no matter what their, uh, no matter what their sales percentage was. And so uh, last year, I got written up. Twice. <laughs> Two months in a row. And I said, Jesus, <laughs> I'm a tither and I'm a giver. What's going on here? And it wasn't that I was doing badly. It was just I happened to be in those bottom two slots. The other guys were like at 50%, and I was like at 30%, 34, 35%. I was like, that's good. You know, when I was hired, that's an excellent number. And so uh, I kind of got discouraged. You can imagine when you get written up and you love your job, I'm getting written up. Yeah. And uh, so the end of the year, as it turns out, uh, out of everyone in our office and for the state, by the grace of God, Patty Brown was the top salesperson. Amen. So God is faithful. And uh, no matter how bleak it may look, you know, he can always bring you to the top. Amen. And so I was very thankful for that and always thankful for his faithfulness to his word. Amen. That's right. Pastor, the only thing that I would add to what you have quoted as far as scriptures, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, it talks about Samuel questioning God. Mm -hmm. And he says, to obey is, is better than sacrifice. Yeah. And that's so true. That's, that's the one thing that we can say. We moved here 15 years ago. And we ended up buying a home, and we were going like, how? And, and by the grace of God, this year it will be paid for. And, and we are, we are <laughs> standing God. proof that he will deliver if you will obey. That's so good. Amen. Y'all give them a big hand. So good. Thank you. Amen. Um, I'm Kirk Bowden. This is my wife, Cindy. For those who don't know who we are, I'm... You know, I'm usually just the ball guy over here that cries during praise and worship. And my, <laughs> wife, my wife gets a little loud and crazy sometimes. But uh, now we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> and first of all, I want to say I appreciate this place. And I like giving to this place. I don't know about you, but I love the loud music. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. There's other churches. <laughs> and, you know, where you can go where it's nice and soft. But I like it loud, you know. And... <laughs> Instead of a coffee bar, I think you ought to put some more of these clip speakers in. Yeah, okay. we can do that too. We, I'm not a big coffee about. drinker, but I, yeah. I'm hooked to your wagon, Pastor, so I'm going to do you, what sir. you want, okay? So, <clears throat> it, I'm, I, I don't want to talk about what's going on with us so much. If you want details about what's happening in our life, talk to us after the service, and we'll let you know what's going on because God's blessing. I just want to say, like Patty said, God is faithful. Yeah. Giving's not something you just do every now and then. It, it's a lifestyle that you have to That's you right. have to continually do. And if you're faithful, God will be faithful to you. And uh, you know, I don't I don't, don't want to spend time talking about us, but you know, because you don't turn to to the weatherman to uh, hear about a raindrop, huh? You turn to the weatherman because you want to hear about the storm. Mm. And I'm more than a raindrop. I'm part of the storm. Okay. And if you're giving your part of the storm that God's pouring out on the church right sure, now, okay? Amen. A storm of blessing, a flood of blessing. Amen. So be a giver, be a tither, and continue to do it. Because it, like in the, the parable of the talents, 
right in the middle of that story, it says, after a long time, the master returned and we gave an account of his servants. And that, that part about a long time, you have to be faithful over years and years and years. And God is always faithful to, to uh, prosper you. Even when you don't, it doesn't look like things happen. Like Patty and her two months, it's kind of like Joseph. You know, he had a dream. He got thrown in a pit. That's like the seed been planted in the ground. And then he went into Potiphar's house, and God blessed everything that he did there. And then he got thrown into prison, and God prospered him there. And then he went to be in the second in command of Egypt. And just, I think we're kind of in stage three right now. Yeah. <laughs> we, we hadn't got there yet, but we're working on something. How many of you are working on something? Amen. Amen? So... Uh, just be faithful and God will continue to bless you. That's right. Amen. You know, I, I think about Super Seed Sundays in the past and about our fear to write something down on that envelope because we were always self-employed. And when you make a vow before the Lord, that's a serious thing. And so the way we got around that was we just never put anything down. We purposed in our heart to give, but we didn't want to commit because we were afraid that if we committed and the money didn't come, that we would have lied before the Lord. Well, I want to tell you, God can take you past that. Because he does not require you to give what he does not supply. But I'm going to tell you this. You get your heart right, and you purpose in your heart to become a, 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 a flowing, not a reservoir, but a, a conduit, right. a blessing for other people. That's right. And there won't be a problem with the giving. Right. And there won't be a problem with him supplying. That's right. And there won't be a problem with the channels open and wide. Right. Um, there just won't be. So I'm going to tell you, even if what you write on that envelope doesn't seem very large, and, you know, I, I guess I'm kind of disappointed in what's in my hand today, but the Lord said, if you'll trust me, I'll get it to you. So I just want to encourage you. It's not an overnight thing. It, well, it doesn't, it's not always an overnight thing, right. but I want to tell you this. Our life changed with one phone call. Yeah. We were going this way, and all of a sudden, we were going this way. And it had nothing to do with us, but God had planned it before the eons of time. Because the thing that brought the wealth into, into our hand, God literally took eons and eons of time to form. And he saw us at this time, in this place in history, to be able to send the gospel out because yeah. of what he formed over eons. And you don't have any clue what God has formed for eons for you That's to right. get it through your hands to be able to spread the gospel. You have no idea. Ma'am. Your job is just to be faithful what he put in your hand. That's true. Amen. Give him a big hand. Thank you. This is Desmond and Portia. Don't they look nice today, like matching very well? Praise God. We thank you. Uh, thank God for this opportunity, as well as Pastor, to say a few words. And the effort is to keep it at two minutes as best as possible. When you have a 30-minute story and you have to give the highlights, <laughs> we'll, we'll just consider this commercial version. All right. <laughs> you know? But uh, what I do want to start off saying is we started off i say even if, if we go back a few years, we, we started off in a, a pretty good size hole. It's nice to, to be on top of the mountain and say, you know what, we can get to the next cliff and, and to have that type of conversation uh, where you're already doing well and, and God is blessing you even more and you're pushing further. But to actually come from somewhere, that, that makes, you know, that some, some people can relate with that, uh, where we actually started off in a hole, a, a, a nice size hole. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I'd hate to admit how far down we were, uh, <laughs> but, but in any case, uh, 
we, we actually had a pretty decent income, and I, and I thank God for that. He, he did provide because we are, we are tithers and, and have been uh, most of our lives, uh, uh, been tithers, and we've, we've done that. And uh, we, would give, we would continue to try to give an offering and try to dig ourselves out of this hole that we're in. <laughs> but one thing that God had put in our hearts was, first of all, to seek godly counsel. Uh, concerning that, and that made a big difference, and, and uh, he, he put uh, a couple on our hearts to do that, and, and we did, and, and of course, uh, according to the godly council, we had to make some lifestyle changes, <laughs> because uh, we, we were going on extravagant trips and doing a lot of things that we shouldn't have with the amount of debt that we had to deal with, so uh, it, was, it was some changes, sure. but, uh, so we had to do that, but one other thing that God had put on our hearts is that we needed to increase our giving. We, we gave to a lot of other things, we did a lot of other things, but we did not give as we should have, not as consistently and, and not at the level that we should have. So we purposed in our heart that we would increase our giving uh, for this, this last year. Um, and when, when you're in a hole, you know, when you talk percentages, you know, if you want to consider us on the bottom percentage, we, we, we're getting there. Uh, and we will be at the 30%. I do I honestly believe that, and we trust God and we have faith because we're, we're going to get there. But we started off from moving from 2.5% uh, to just bumping up to 5%. And, and we said that we would give that regardless. We would pay our tithes and we would give 5% and we would do it consistently regardless of what happened. That was what we were going to give. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it cheerfully, and it does not matter we knew that God would provide for us if we would just commit to that. Right. And my goodness, <laughs> I never would have imagined that God would come through and show up so much. I, I, can't, even, I can't even tell y'all half of the stuff, but I'm going to just say the, the quick version. We have had, uh, between what has been paid off and what God has supernaturally just made, forgiven, gone away, granted about $78,000 yeah, in, in one year. <laughs> and, and, and we had to come back and add this because, you know, <laughs> she had some things, I had some things, and it wasn't just one person, it was both of us. We had even checks, things that we didn't even write down, checks that came in the mail, and we were like, what is this for? Where did it come from? We need to research this. How, how do we get this? And, you know, and we still don't know to this day half the, half the stuff, but came in, just checks that came in the mail, and I thank God for that. It, it's been a blessing. Uh, one other thing, I, I'll try to be swift, but uh, I, uh, I used to work on any day of the week with my job. Uh, uh, very few Sundays I was able to attend. And as my giving increased, I, I got a promotion on my job where I have weekends off. <laughs> so I'm Amen. able to attend church services. And, of course, so we had some vehicles that we, were, we had to sell, and we were able to sell them almost instantly. It, 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 it was just amazing. And, and God had blessed us in so many ways, and I can't even imagine a lot of the stuff that, that he's done. And also income. Our income has increased by 40% yeah, in, this, yeah. in this last year. So God is doing miraculous things, and, and I have a contract that, in addition to my job, I have a, a half-million-dollar contract that I'm getting ready to sign uh, on tomorrow uh, for, for a construction project that I'm managing in addition to my job. So God is just blessing us Amen. tremendously just by our commitment to take a step of faith and say, we believe God. And so I just challenge each one of you, don't look at your situation. Don't even worry about the how. That is God's responsibility. Our responsibility is just to have the faith and trust him and know that he's going to come through. Yeah, that's very good. Amen. Um, only thing I want to say is that um, from some of that money that got paid off, it was a credit card debt that we have from a long time ago, and they just sent a letter, $22,000. They just canceled it. And when I came home, I was like, Desmond showed me the letter. And I'm like, wait, how they do that? Why they do that? You know, I'm, he said, it's favor, it's God. And I was like, it sure enough is God, because we increased our supernatural, you know, sowing. Every year, we do our seed. And I said, I want to double it. Every year, let's try to double it. Because I heard somebody else 
say that one year in their testimony. I said, that's what we should do. I said, because if we commit to doing it, then God has to give it to us. Amen. He has to supply the seed. That's the word. He's going to supply it. So praise God, even this morning, Desmond was like, okay, let's give more. Because we had problems last year with, you know, just paying off the supernatural seed. And I said, we still owe that to God. Even though it's a whole new year, we're going to pay that off. Amen. So I have a very strict budget. Anybody that knows me, I'm, I'm bad with my budget. And that's thanks to our great financial godly counselors. I give them all the credit. But um, I said, we're going to rearrange some stuff because we re rearranged stuff in the past for my hair, nails, trips, uh. <laughs> you know, football games. I love football. We rearranged the budget in a minute for that. So I said, we can rearrange it for God. So this morning I got on there and we changed it. And I said, we are going to, you know, finish our commitment from last year to do a whole new commitment for this year. Amen. And so praise God. Very good. Amen. Y'all give them all a big hand. Thank you all very much. Anybody who knows Portia knows that she can talk more than that. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. When I was uh, in college, I was working here at the church, and um, I was going back to college. It was summertime, and I was going back to college. And um, anybody knows if you're a college student and you work in the summertime, you save money, so you'll have money. Uh, the next semester and so I had some money saved up and someone came and preached and they were challenging us about giving and sowing into the house of God and that as we sow into the house of God and to what God's doing here that God would provide a house for us and so I'm of course a college student you're not necessarily thinking about a house so much you're just thinking about getting out of college and uh, getting a job and all that stuff and so but I had some money saved up I sowed a thousand dollars on that Sunday um, or I was a Sunday, maybe been camp meeting time somewhere right around there, but I sold a thousand dollars and I felt the power of God all over me like crazy. I don't know how else to tell you. I let go of that and the presence of God hit me. I danced my like crazy up here. Um, when the president, I mean, like Kimberly was doing back there, man, I was doing it up here. It was just wild. I felt the presence of God. And all I can say is this, um, we, I'm 35 years old and I've, and you can, this may make some of you upset, but yeah, I can live with that. Um, um, we are living in our second uh, new house that we've built ourselves. And I've um, been there for maybe six years now. And the blessing of the Lord is upon our life. And I, I don't take credit for that myself. All I can tell you is I obeyed God. And God did that. God did that. And we're faithful and there's certain areas you have to work on. But God's faithful. God's faithful. And in uh, Haggai, my dad mentioned this. I was talking to him a few weeks ago, and he mentioned this scripture, and it just kind of stuck out to me. Um, in Haggai chapter 1, and there's a whole passage there, but basically the Lord says this to the people of God. He says, he says why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? He says, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but, uh, but are not satisfied. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but cannot keep them. Your wages disappear as though you're putting them in pockets filled with holes. Yeah. He says, why? The reason he says, he says, my blessing isn't upon you because you haven't taken care of my house. It's basically what he says. Amen. And so I purpose in my heart to make sure this house is taken care of before my house is taken care of at my house. And I believe in taking care of your house. Amen. That's wisdom to do that. But I purpose in my heart to make sure whatever I would do at my house, I'll pour into this house first uh, in any way, shape or form. If it's, a, if it's work, if it's whatever, I'll do whatever I have to do um, to make sure God's house uh, is taken care of. And all I can tell you is this, the seed that you sow has a harvest contained within it. And you've heard it said, you know, uh, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. And if you really stop and think about that, what does that mean? I mean, there's a, there's a, a harvest that comes off of that seed that is sown that is beyond what just you have just right now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, you know, I don't, I can't keep you much longer. We've got another service, but I'd ask you to commit now. Um, you can get your card out. It says really simply, uh, Project Reach and Connect, the vision to extend our reach into the community, multimedia outreach and improve and update our current facilities. Legacy Project means we're continuing to make payments on our Family Life Center, which is right back here, as you saw in this, the video there. Um, and you're just saying, first of all, I covenant together with God and CWC to be a tither. That's a tenth. 
And then secondly, I'm, I'm covenanting together with Christian Worship Center to give over and above my tithe um, today. Or the next, if you look there, it says a one-time gift if you'd like to give today. Or a total gift by April the 5th. What's significant about April the 5th? Well, on April the 5th, we're going to have a vision banquet. And everyone who commits at minimum to be a tither, um, you're invited to the vision banquet. Say, well, am I not invited if I don't commit to tithe? Exactly. <laughs> it's for those that are committed to this house. I, did, I didn't say a minimum. I didn't say you have to give $1,000. I mean, if you commit to tithe and all you make is $10 a week, you're invi- yeah, it's fine. You understand my point? So it's not the amount necessary that I'm talking about. It's, it's all uh, having our hearts connected together and giving together. So that's uh, on April the 5th. And so you say, I don't, I don't have anything today or I've only got so much today, but I'm believing God for something for the next 30 days. And I'd like to give it on that. It's a Friday night, April the 5th. So, um, you know, it's a nice time. We get together, have food and have some, have some time in the word and worship and all that. Um, so anyway, that's on uh, April the 5th. And then, um, you know, if you say, I'd like to give something every month, many of you do that, then you can go ahead and commit to do that as well. I'd like to give something every month. And, uh, you know, you can do that as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so me and my wife, um, we're going to give uh, uh, $3,500 today over and above our regular tithe and offering. And we've traveled some and been able to minister the past couple of weeks. So that's a blessing. You know, I see that as seed to sow. So today we're giving over $5,000 today just ourselves. And so uh, we believe in this. We believe in this. So Brother Jesse Duplantis, he always says it this way, you know, don't get upset at somebody's harvest until you've seen their seed. Right? So uh, don't get mad at my house or my car, you know, but the Lord's blessing me. But it's because I'm a tither and I'm a sower and I'm going to keep tithing and I'm going to keep on sowing. Praise God. Amen. And so this is, this is uh, God's house, but in, in another aspect, it's our house. So we take care of it together. We take care of it together. Praise the Lord. And so uh, I believe God will supply a seed to sow. Amen.